Hello friends, myself Dr. Deepak and today we are going to discuss about the anatomy of internal ear. So the internal ear it is also known as the labyrinth and this labyrinth it is lies within the petrous temporal bone in the lateral aspect of the cranial cavity. So this labyrinth or the internal ear it is formed by the two structures on the outer side the bony labyrinth and inside the bony labyrinth there is a membranous labyrinth okay so the labyrinth has a two different type of part one is the bony labyrinth and one is the membranous labyrinth means if we understand the structure so if i draw one ball pen here this is a pen okay assume that this is a pen the posterior side is closed okay so in this pen in its central area there is a refill okay you know that it is a refill so the labyrinth is like this pen means this outer part of the pen it is a bony labyrinth and this refill it is a membranous labyrinth okay so this is a bony labyrinth and this refill it is a membranous labyrinth so the refill is filled with the ink and this fluid inside this membranous labyrinth it is known as the endolymph so the fluid inside the membranous labyrinth means if we assume the labyrinth as a ball pen so inside the refill the fluid the ink it is a endolymph whereas outside this refill this gap this gap it is filled with one another fluid and this fluid it is known as a peri lymph okay so we can understand that the inner ear or the labyrinth it is formed by the two different parts okay on the outer part it is formed by the bony substance and it is known as a bony labyrinth and within this bone there is a membranous structure and it is known as a membranous labyrinth so if we assume this labyrinth as an ball pen so the outer core of the ball pen it is a bony labyrinth whereas inside this outer core of the ball pen there is a refill so this refill it is as like a membranous labyrinth and the refill is filled with the ink so this ink or the fluid which is in the membranous labyrinth it is known as endolymph and the fluid outside this refill okay in this area which is separating this membranous labyrinth from this bony labyrinth it is known as a peri lymph okay so hope so you may understand how these two structures are separate from each other so this bony labyrinth has a three parts what are the parts of the labyrinth let me see so we can draw a chart so the labyrinth can be divided in the two parts the bony labyrinth and the membranous labyrinth this bony labyrinth has the three structures the cochlea the vestibule and the semicircular canal inside the cochlea the membranous labyrinth part it is known as a cochlea duct inside the vestibule the part of membranous labyrinth has a two structure the saccules and the utricles and inside the semicircular canal the membranous part of the labyrinth it is known as a semicircular duct okay so let we see all the structure so first of all we draw a diagram of internal ear so what are the bony part this is a cochlea 
then the vestibule then the semicircular canal okay so the bony part of the labyrinth it is the cochlea inside the cochlea the duct it is known as a cochlea duct it is a part of membranous labyrinth then this is the vestibular area okay and inside the vestibule the membranous part they are the saccules and the utricles okay and on the posterior aspect of this vestibule there are the semicircular canals three semicircular canals this is the superior or the anterior semicircular canal the posterior semicircular canal and the lateral semicircular canal inside this semicircular canal the part of membranous labyrinth it is known as a semicircular duct okay so first of all we see the cochlea so the cochlea it is the anterior most part of this um, labyrinth or the internal ear it is forming the anterior most part of the labyrinth and it is resemble with a shell of a common snail okay this rounded structure it is resemble with the shell of a common snail and the central axis of this cochlea it is known as a modulus and around to this modulus it is forming two and three fourth round it means that on the central part here if we draw a cut section from here so how the cochlea look alike so let me see on a central part of the cochlea there is a one triangular bony part and this triangular bony part it is known as a modulus okay then around this modulus the cochlea it is forming a two and three fourth round so first round so it is a cut section of the cochlea so we can see here that is central part it is formed by the bone okay and this bony area it is known as a modulus okay the modulus it is extending into this cochlear area and divides this cochlea into the three different part okay on around this modulus there are the bony spiral lamina the bony spiral lamina and this bony spiral lamina is dividing this cochlear canal into the three different parts okay so how these parts are formed okay so around the modulus there is a bony spiral lamina and this spiral lamina it is dividing this all cochlear canal into the three different parts so here are two types of membranes present here basilar membrane this membrane it is a basilar membrane and a vestibular membrane so due to this basilar membrane and the vestibular membrane this cochlear canal it is divided into the three parts the part superior to this vestibular membrane it is known as a scala vestibuli and this part inferior to this basilar membrane it is known as a scala tympani 
and in between that scalar media okay so due to the spiral lamina and the basilar and the vestibular membrane this cochlear canal it is divided in the three different part on the these it is the basilar membrane the vestibular membrane or the resinous membrane and the part in between these two membrane it is known as the scala media part superior to the scala media it is the scala vestibuli and inferior to that it is known as the scala tympani as we have seen uh, at the beginning that there is a one ball pan and inside the ball pan there is a refill okay so this refill it is a scala media okay the part superior to this refill it is a scala vestibuli and part superior uh, inferior to this scala media it is a scala tympani okay so hope so you may understand the refill it is a scala media means it is a membranous part okay then superior to that it is a scala vestibuli and the scala tympani so we have already discussed about that so you hope so you may understand the scala vestibuli and the scala tympani both are filled with the peri lymph whereas the scala media it is form it is filled with the uh, endo lymph okay so the scala vestibuli scala media and the scala tympani so here in this scala media there are some special type of columnar ciliated cells are present and these cells are known as a organ of corti these cells are the end receptor for the hearing and these cells are known as a organ of corti this organ of corti are the end receptor for the hearing and the <coughs> they are connected by the peripheral processes of bipolar neuron of vestibular cochlea now here the cochlea it is attached with the cochlea now and the vestibule with the vestibular now both these nerves are combinedly forming the eighth cranial nerve the vestibular cochlear now so the fibers the vestibular the cochlea now and the vestibular now they have a bipolar type of the neuron so we know what is the bipolar neuron so bipolar neurons are present here in this spiral lamina this is a one bipolar neuron so here is a central process so this central process it is forming the vestibular now and its peripheral processes are here they are attached innervate the organ of corti so when the sound waves are reach up to the middle ear cavity and from this middle ear cavity they are traverse into the vestibule through the oval window and from the round window to the cochlea okay the sound waves reaching up to the middle ear cavity they are traversed into the vestibule and cochlea through the oval and the round window so these vibrations are transfer into this endolymph and this uh, there is a movement into the endolymph and this movement it is uh, covered up by the organ of corti and this organ of corti uh are attached finally with the vestibular cochlea now so the uh, information of the hearing it is carried by this vestibular cochlea now okay so now the vestibule so the vestibule has a it is forming the middle part of the internal ear and this 
bony area it is it has a medial surface lateral surface and the posterior surface its lateral surface its lateral surface has a two uh, has a one opening and this opening it is known as a uh, oval window and this oval window it is closed by the first step of the uh, step uh, st uh, steps bone okay we already discuss about that in the middle ear cavity then uh, on its posterior surface on its posterior surface uh, there is a opening of the semicircular canal the semicircular canal is open into its posterior surface by the five openings then its medial surface so on its medial surface if we draw the medial surface of the vestibule on the anterior side and posterior side on the anterior side there is a spherical recess on posterior side and inferior to these both uh, recesses there are one other cochlear recess okay then inferior to this elliptical recess there is a opening of the vestibular canal the vestibular canal is open uh, just inferior to this elliptical recess on its medial surface it is in the contact with the internal acoustic meatus okay so at, at this side of the internal acoustic meatus there are the spherical recess the elliptical recess and the cochlear recess are present and inferior to this elliptical recess there is a opening of the vestibular canal okay then the membranous part of the vestibule has a two different structures they are the saccules and the utricles so saccules is present on the anterior side whereas the utricle it is present on the posterior side if we draw this saccules and utricles into one another diagram so it will be more clear so let me draw here one another diagram it is a saccule it is a utricles and it is a superior or anterior semicircular canal posterior semicircular canal it is a lateral semicircular canal so this is a cochlear duct then this it is a duct of reunius then it is a saccules utricles semicircular duct this is a duct of utricle then duct of saccules and this combinedly form the duct of vestibule okay so here you can see here it is a saccule it is a duct of the reunias on posterior side it is a uh, duct of the saccule then duct of the utricles forming the duct of the vestibule and on the posterior side of the vestibule there are the semicircular ducts which are opening into this utricular area okay so here the medial surface on the medial surface of the saccules and utricles uh, their uh, cells of this medial surface are becomes modified and they are forming uh, uh, a special type of the cells they are known as a maculae and they are the receptor for the static balance okay now we will see the semicircular canals so there are the three semicircular canals this semicircular canals are the anterior semicircular canal 
then the posterior semicircular canal and the lateral semicircular canals this semicircular canal cells opens into the vestibule by the five different openings why the five openings because the posterior end of the anterior semicircular canal and the superior end of posterior semicircular canal joins here and forms crust commune okay it is known as a crust commune so the posterior end of the anterior semicircular canal and the superior end of the posterior semicircular canal adjoins and forms the crust commune so they have a one common opening so this is a one opening of anterior semicircular canal then this common opening second then the third opening of the posterior semicircular canal and these two opening fourth and fifth so by this five opening the semicircular canals are opens into this vestibular area okay now the there are the one end of this each semicircular canal it is dilated and this dilated end it is known as the ampulla so there are the three different ampullas as a on the anterior semi uh, anterior semicircular canal uh, is ampulla it is present on his anterior side then on uh, the posterior semicircular canal it is uh, is uh, ampulla it is uh, present on the uh, posterior wall then the lateral semicircular canal is ampulla is present near the ampulla of the anterior semicircular canal okay so the anterior semicircular canal it is in a vertical plane the posterior semicircular canal it is also in a vertical plane but the lateral semicircular canal it is in a horizontal plane it means the anterior semicircular canal it is like that okay and the post the anterior semicircular canal it is like that the posterior semicircular canal it is continuation of the anterior semicircular canal like that but the lateral semicircular canal it is like that okay in a horizontal plane so this is a anterior semicircular canal in a vertical plane then the posterior semicircular canal in a vertical plane and the lateral semicircular canal it is in a horizontal plane the posterior end of anterior semicircular canal and the superior end of posterior semicircular canal are forming a one common opening and it is known as a crust commune okay so the anterior semicircular canal it is in a vertical plane posterior it is also on a vertical plane and lateral on a horizontal plane so the convex area the convex part of anterior semicircular canal it is on the superior side the convexity of posterior semicircular canal it is on the posterior side whereas the convexity of lateral semicircular canal it is in a posterior lateral side okay then the semicircular ducts so the semicircular ducts it is a membranous part which is present inside this semicircular canals okay so at the ampullary area the at the ampullary area this semicircular duct have a special type of cell which are known as a uh, cristae or the crista of the ampulla okay so this crista are the receptor for the kinetic type of the balance the macules which are present into the vestibule and the saccule they are the receptor for the uh, static balance whereas the crista present into the semicircular duct they are the receptor for the kinetic balance means when there is a movement of the head so this movement is uh, uh, observed by this crista into the semicircular duct and this information is traversed through the vestibular cochlea now to the brain okay so these macules are the receptor for the kinetic uh, sorry static balance and the crista are the receptor of the static balance if we draw the crista here so it is looks like that this is a semicircular canal and this is the ampullary area and inside that there are the semicircular duct
and here the krishna are present and this semicircular duct it is filled with the endolymph so if there is a movement in the hair there is a movement in the endolymph and this movement it is collected by this krishna okay so we have seen the four different types of the uh, sorry three different types of the receptors so first of all we have seen the organ of cauti they are the receptor for the hearing then we have seen the maculae so they are the receptor for the static balance and then we have seen the crista they are the receptor for the kinetic balance so these three receptors are present into these three structures of the internal ear now the artery supply of the internal ear so which artery are supplying to the internal ear mainly there are the two arteries which are supplying labyrinthine branch of basilar artery and one other branch the stylomastoid branch of posterior auricular artery so these two arteries are supplying to these all internal ear the labyrinthine branch of the basilar artery and the stylomastoid branch of the posterior auricular arteries then venous drainage so veins so the venous blood it is drained finally by the superior petrosal sinus which sinus superior petrosal sinus the now so the vestibular cochlear now it is supplying to this internal ear okay so here the anatomy of internal ear is completed thank you thank you very much